Hi, and welcome to The Tingans, the podcast in which we take an adult and critical perspective into the world of cartoons and animation and analyze how they affect the pop cultural landscape at large. I'm one of your hosts, Nikki. I'm Nina. And I'm on a doghouse. It's not... Why is it flying? <laughs> it's not going nowhere. I, this is... <sighs> movies are lying to me all the time. It's, it's built to fly. <laughs> it's... Oh, I didn't paint it red. Made of dreams. I didn't paint it red, you guys. That was a problem. Ah, it's like it's, it's like Warhammer with it, when you paint it red, it, it <laughs> you go and faster. you can't see the bottom of it. Like never look to see the bottom or the inside. Snoopy was Snoopy a Time Lord? Let's get into let's get into the show. No, actually, that was the thing. He had like a bunch of cool shit in his house. He just didn't sleep in there. He had like a pool k- table and shit. I cause I think it was it like had a downstairs. Oh yeah, his his doghouse was the bomb. Peppermint Patty stayed there. But when when she, when she still thought that Snoopy was a, a boy, a weird looking boy, she like went to to Charlie Brown's back country house, <laughs> and then Marcy was like, "Sir, sure, it's a fucking dog. <laughs> You're sleeping in a dog house." I love anyway. Baron. This week. This week we are talking about the Peanuts movie, and I think as an extension, we're going to talk about Peanuts as a whole because, like, this movie is Peanuts as a whole. A huge part of how can you not? It is, yeah. And uh, you may notice I'm talking a little quieter today. That is because it is ten thirty at night. I just got off of work, and this is the only time we can record this week, so I'm going to have to be a little less bombastic this episode. And like twenty people just said, "Oh, this is automatically my favorite episode." <laughs> This idiot's not yelling so much. Hooray, no hyena laugh. I'll do my best to well, not be funny. With that opening bit, I'm on a good start. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got for news, Nina? Okay, Legend of Korra. The full series is coming online. It is arriving on Nick.com and the Nick app available until November 30th. You can watch the whole damn thing. Apparently. Watch it all from start Un- to finish, and then maybe you'll have a better opinion on it and not be butts about every season finale. I don't like fans of things. And additionally, yeah, I mean, it, there are it, three new videos as well. Yeah, that the, this article doesn't explain what they are very well, but we'll check them out. Yeah. Yeah, like, I I didn't realize it was only going to be for, like, a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. But I guess we're not doing that. Yeah, I think it is going to be a, a good opportunity for everybody to like take a look back and reassess the show because you know everybody was when everybody was watching it the expectations were so high yeah and we said we said this in our core episodes that like you look back and it's going to be a, a lot more solid than you thought like there there obviously were missteps we're not gonna we're not gonna, trying to erase that there were problems with the show there were problems with avatar but people ignore those because as a whole it was so good well there wasn't as many <laughs> that's probably true that's almost certainly true um, I would like to look back at the show in like another year. I, I think I'm going to be ready to reassess it. Yep. Yeah. We are getting close to the one year anniversary of Korosami. Yes. Korosamas, because it was near Christmas. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, if you feel like slam jamming the whole show this Thanksgiving break, uh, and don't want to buy the DVDs. Yeah. There is this still go. a way to support to support the official release, like they said in those YouTube videos? They don't make anymore. What a, a bridge series? Is those are still a thing? Yeah. No, they're not. I mean, DBC well, the, Bridge still uploads. Yeah, the, and still the, DBC Bridge is the only one that's still uploading because it was the only yeah. good one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Yu Gi Oh Bridge is pretty funny. The, anyway, there, there, it comes out like every five months. There was good months. stuff in. The, there was a good good stuff in that one, but like. Yeah, that, he just doesn't make shit anymore. Yeah, no. He, he doesn't make that anymore. He's still putting out regular videos just to justify being a content creator, but he's not putting out Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge. To, to, go, to go into a convention every weekend? Yeah. <laughs> His Naruto Bridge to Bridge was way better. Right? Oh my god, it was so good. Oh that my was, god, it was that, so good. <laughs> that thing was insane. Oh, okay. Um, ahem. A next story is about the new film coming up in December 21st of 2016 called Sing. It's from Illumination, right? Yes, fine. Illumination Entertainment. Illumination is is Despicable Me, right? Yes. That's why there are little minions as part of their logo now, apparently. Oh, God. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, because they know what's up. Because I always confuse them in Blue Sky. The movie that we're talking about today was Blue Sky. Yes. 
Who did Lorax? Uh, well, I know was. Blue Sky did Horton Hears a Who. So it's okay. So they probably reason. did Lorax. That they did yeah. Lorax. Yeah. So this film is going to star Reese Witherspoon and Scarlett Johansson and Seth MacFarlane and Matthew McConaughey and, you know, this crazy all-star cast. Uh, directed by Garth Jennings, who directed the Hitchhiker's Guide movie that we've recently said that we don't think is very bad, like everyone else says. Um, and it centers around a dapper koala named Buster Moon, played by McConaughey, the manager of a theater that has fallen from its former glory. Buster gets the inspired idea to stage a singing competition in hopes of saving the theater. The contest's top five contenders turn out to be a crooning moose, McFarlane, a teen elephant with stage fright, singer-songwriter Tori Kelly, an underwhelmed sow with too many piglets, Witherspoon, an intimidating gorilla, young British actor Taryn Egerton, and a punk rock-loving porcupine, Johansson, who's trying to ditch her arrogant boyfriend. Dude, talking, John's- talking animals are just all in full force next year. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, also, uh, Illumination did do the Lorax, and Blue Sky did Horton Hears a Who. So, even more confusion. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's like early Marvel movies that are farmed out to everywhere. Yeah, John C. Riley is going to play a black sheep named Eddie. There's going to be Nick Kroll, Jennifer Saunders, Peter Serafinowicz, Leslie Jones. Nick Offerman is the only person yeah! in this list that I know. And Beck, Beck Bennett and Jay Farrow. Out of those actors I recognize, I don't know them to be singers. The idea of McConaughey singing is very strange to me. It's very scary to me. <laughs> like, I'm terrified. Uh, another thing that's a little scary is that they're promising that more than 85 songs what? will be packed into this film. How does... What? Is, is it a fucking grindcore musical? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? What do you even is, know is what your is? Is the music being composed by Napalm Death? <laughs> Every song's six. fifteen seconds long. Oh. I mean N- Napalm they... Death is in, in the uh Guinness uh, to to explain the joke for people who didn't look up bands that were referenced by Guilty Gear, which is the only reason why I know about this fucking band, because they're really bad. They are they are in the Guinness Book of World Record for the shortest recorded song called You Suffer, which is like 1.1 seconds long. It's just like a... And that's it. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 but there's still like 80 distinct notes in there. Because <laughs> gr- Grindcore... So counts as a song. Yeah, Grindcore is just... It's like all at 450 beats per minute, and it's so fast that it's completely unintelligible. It's awful. Well, maybe that's their way of saying this is going to be like a continuous musical where the singing just never stops it never stops but also nothing's gonna be a full entire song that's that's gonna be a that's almost if it's a 90 minute film that's almost a song a minute it's like that they might be giant song was it fingertips i don't know i don't know really i i pegged you to be a big tmbg fan tooch i don't know why i only know i mean i i like what i've heard i just haven't delved into their discography i just i know the songs that they did on uh, Tiny Tunes, and I know Tiny Tunes, yes, <laughs> and Ham and and Home. I obviously I found them through Homestar Runner. Of, of, that's still my favorite song of theirs. That song is legitimately fucking great. Uh, well, actually, I guess te- I guess film. technically I didn't because I heard them on Tiny Tunes first, but I didn't know they were a real exactly, band. exactly, exactly the same for me. Uh, yeah, was yeah. it just Istanbul on Tiny Tunes? No, it was also Particle Man. Was it? Were those in the same episode? I don't. I don't know. I don't think man. I, I know there was the Istanbul was like they were doing MTV. I can't remember any thing. of these songs. It's been a while since I watched Tiny Toons or Homestar Runner. Do you don't remember Experimental Film? I'm divorcing you. Oh, okay, that's the one. <laughs> there yeah. you go. They also wrote the the music for um the song from the email Different Town. Yeah, and didn't like Strong Bad come and perform at one of their concerts or something? Puppet Strong Bad, yes. Yeah, Puppet Strong Bad. He's saying. And I like, think at a later one, uh, Puppet Marshy. <laughs> Marshy. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, if nothing else. Yeah, I mean, as we've said, we we liked Jennings' adaptation of Hitchhiker's Guide pretty okay. Yeah. So and that's not a that's not a bad premise for a movie. It's not. I mean, it that's sounds a good very. Premise. It sounds like. You're t- 
typical like jukebox musical premise like i need yeah. reasons for songs like a yeah, cabaret and, and... or like a Burlesque Honestly, in, in terms whatever. of in terms of in terms of animated jukebox musicals, the bar's never been lower because the world is still recovering from Romeo and Juliet. So, so <laughs> yep. you're they're good or to go. The, what was the other one? What was oh, the other right. one? Strange Magic. Shit, the even worse one. <laughs> Str- oh yeah, Strange Magic. Oh, I don't think Wait, anyone saw. No that one movie. watched it. Was that worse than Romeo and Juliet? I don't know because no one cra- watched it. That's a crazy sentence that you just said to me. I didn't watch either film, so I wouldn't know. I've 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 seen reviews. My understanding of Nomeo no, 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 no. is that it's Nomeo is like actively putrid and painful to watch. Whereas I, what I could tell from Strange Magic is that movie was just a big old box of fucking nothing. Is this like the third episode in a row where Nomeo and Juliet comes up? Like, what is going on? Oh, <laughs> only second. <laughs> okay. All right. A uh, next bit of news is a bit of sad news for you old taku out there i don't know if you call yourself that but i start seen that doing t-shirt. it the anime dubbing studio magnitude 8 has officially closed its doors oh no magnitude 8 is a studio that's been around for a while and it recorded some of the best stuff Jesus. of that early anime area era including things like akira the Big O, Cowboy Bebop, Ghost in the Shell, and even like video games like Resident Evil 5 and like a bunch of other stuff. Um, they said that uh, Claypool, who is the, or no, Les Claypool the third, is the audio engineer behind the studio. I think uh, if you're a man named Les, you have to like be an audio engineer. Yeah. yeah. I just know him and, and Gibson? No. Les Paul. Les... Paul, yeah, him. I was not expecting you to fuck that one up. <laughs> I, I'm mad at myself for fucking that. I was like, okay, what's the name of the guitar? What are the names of guitars? <laughs> I, those are the only two I know. I guess uh, Strata, what the, it, the other one is. It, it wasn't Fender. That was the other oh, one. Right, yeah. That was the other company. Oh, I know a lot of guitars. Huh, how about that? <laughs> yeah. Rickenbacker. Oh, shit. These are all words I know. We should go on with, yeah. the, with the article. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so he said that they probably recorded, like, over, like, a thousand, like, episodes, trailers, games, movies, what have you. Very many animation, anime-related. And he says that it's, they're they're closing not because of, like, the fact that dubs aren't popular, especially with, like, simulcast dubs and so on. It's just that today's budget makes it really hard to maintain a proper studio because he says that, like, in this area, this era, a few pieces of foam and an M-box being called a studio, floated floors and walls, isolated electrical, tuned rooms, etc., have gone from necessity to luxury. So, like, the cost of having a really nice recording studio of, like, good standards i guess i guess it's just too much to maintain especially when you're like paying yeah that makes sense because like the combination of you know you can make a home studio for not a whole lot of money and the software has made it so that you can more easily filter out the bullshit that normally you would need the the room hardware to filter out yeah i can see just as you know that technology all those technologies advance that the idea that you need to rent out you know fucking abbey road or whatever to scream an anime man you know yeah i get where he's coming from yeah yeah so you know he can't afford to stay in business with his you know recording standards of like what he wants for his studio um and that's kind of a shame but i guess it's just how things have changed especially considering that like i know at the very least bebop like if, if if you ever meet someone who says that the Cowboy Bebop dub is bad, just punch them in the throat. Or don't, because they don't... I, ha- I have a friend who says it's not that impressive at all, and I was like... Yeah, but that, that's not... I'm just gonna ignore you. Honestly, that's uh, th- that's still pretty good for a, for a fucking sub-snob, because at least they're not saying it's, like, awful. Like, most people are just like, yeah, oh, I can't, this, wa- yeah. I can't even listen to this dub. Like, He's who like, are you? I can listen to doing? it, but I don't think it's better than the Japanese. Listen, man. The, the, like, listen, man. Has unless, anyone the, actually um, listened unless... to the Japanese dub of Bebop? Like, has anyone actually ever listened to it? Because I don't know anyone who has. No, nobody saw that. That was never, that was How? never distributed. How would they have? When, it, when that first dropped, <laughs> everybody saw. Subtitles. 
everybody saw Cowboy Bebop on Adult Swim, and Adult Swim has only ever done dubs. Dubs are the only um, reason and- any of you assholes like anime today, so everyone needs to shut up. <laughs> is it, see, like, that's not even what, a joke! Only th- yeah, now the only thing I could see is like, you know, Cowboy Bebop obviously set a new standard, but if you come from, you know, dubs are generally like a lot higher quality now, or like a higher percentage of dubs are higher quality yeah, now. That's an, that, that's so if you, thing. if you come from like, so if you're like 13 and you've like, you know, listened to a lot of recent Funimation stuff and then you go back and listen to Bebop, you're like, yeah, it's just like a good dub. I don't see what the huge deal is, but like, I mean, that's because you're a baby, you weren't there. Yeah, go listen to the original Voltron dub, and then come back to me and tell me the Funimation doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. But it's got, like, texture, like, the way it was recorded, like, the voices have all, like, I don't know. Some dubs, and then some dubs are still bad, but it's like, it's like, yes. like, for, like, for, like, this is my whole thing. I, I, I'm a busyman. I, sometimes <laughs> I can't, like, if, if, if I'm watching, if I'm slam jamming sub, if I'm slam jamming anime, which in this, like, so with my life and this podcast, it's what I'm doing. Like, yeah. if, 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 and if your it, other abs- podcast, if it absolutely has to be anime. subtitled, that's going to be my day. Cause I can't look away from the screen for more than a half second or else I've missed an entire line of dialogue. Yep. I, I don't have that kind yeah, of time. It better be, it better be something really worth it. Like Tatami galaxy. Where you literally can't look away from the screen for you anything. Miss three, three pages of script if you look away for one minute. <laughs> one second. Um, did they say which Akira dub they did? Was it the one with... Um, I'm assuming the original, oh, yeah. Cam considering Clark the, the other era ones. that this guy's talking about with Bebop and Ghost in the Shell and Big O. That was... Because well, I, I, think, I think it originally did... I think it did get an 80s dub, or at least a 1990 dub. Yeah, like when I it mean, first dropped, but I don't know who did that one. Yeah, okay, the first one was the Cam Clark one, the Stinko Man one, right? Yeah, I think it's the first. I think it's the first one. Yeah, yeah, because this that was the era, like the first kind of wave of like anime DVDs coming to the United States that yeah. later got aired on like Toonami, other than the porn, which was not recorded in good studios because <laughs> it didn't have to be. Uh... <laughs> Anyway, so that kind of stinks a lot. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, I mean, what are you gonna do? That's that, that's the way that's the way this industry works. Times change, and sometimes the old way of doing things can't keep up. Money. And so our last story we have here is was sent to us by our fan Plarcy about a new show, a new Netflix original series uh, created by Bill Burr. And I've also seen this covered on a couple of other sites as well. It keeps popping up. And it's called Bill Burr's F is for Family, an animated sitcom following a family stuck in the 70s. Quote, a time when you could smack your kids, smoke inside, and bring a gun to the airport. Hmm. It's a six-episode series, and it will land December 18th. Uh... Bill Burr is best known as Saul Goodman's henchman. That wasn't Huel on Breaking Bad. I don't know what that means because I never watched Breaking Bad. Nikki, you watched Breaking Bad. Was that a fun character? I don't think I got that far. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, it gave you terrible anxiety. I, I I know Bill Burr. I know Bill Burr as a comedian. I'm not familiar yeah. with like any of his specific bits because I haven't heard his stuff in forever. But I I just I recall him being one of those like. Like those those I, in this day and age, at this point, I call it dad comedy because there's no one left to enjoy it other <laughs> yeah. than dad. Because it's always like, I'm pretty old now. It's I like, don't get young stuff. It's dumb, isn't it? Dumb everybody, and then everyone laughs. Like there's no joke. <laughs> this beer tastes like fruit. Where's my Miller Light? <laughs> <laughs> when, I was in high, when I was in high school, I was consuming a lot of stand up comedy because that's what I wanted to be at the time. Um, and. Bill Burr was always one of those guys who was like, oh, I gotta get around to, to checking out his stuff, but never did. Either that, or I'm confusing him with Bill Hicks, who I also haven't checked out his shit. I think I, um... Uh, uh, sorry, I that's I just really number on I'm, I'm assuming he had at least one Comedy Central half hour. So I probably saw it. Yeah, other people appearing are um, Laura Dern, Justin Long... And then executive producers, we have Simpsons writer Michelle 
are Michael Price, my bad, and Vince Vaughn and Victoria Vaughn. This, this uh, write-up that we're reading doesn't make it seem especially interesting, but but I'll check it out when it comes out. I mean, I I guess we have Netflix, so like it's just sitting there. I'll probably watch oh. Aziz's new show first, though. Yeah, I want to check out Aziz's I, new show. Yeah. I need to watch that because <laughs> he's because he's because we because we're we're voice we're voice siblings. I can't have I don't have any excuse to watch not cartoons these days. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not gonna. <laughs> well, I want to watch that anyway. Well, yeah, that's about all I got. All so, right, yeah. let's get into this movie. All right. All right. 